He said hi for two seconds. Ninja. Hello, artists. How are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio, and we are very happy you are here with us today. Well, let's see. We're going to continue on with our Tree of Life. Um, it does have great dimension to it. It does have a bit of a pop-up aspect, so we hinged that metal piece. What you will probably see today is... Uh, adding on the beads and on all the wires, uh, the beading part of this did take a very, very long time. We're talking um, probably two days of constant work on it. My hands were trashed at the end of it. Um, and as I mentioned last week, the thing that you can do um, instead of using the wire is maybe use like ribbons or yarn or fabric or something like that and do kind of a woven pattern. That would be pretty cool with this, and that would be much easier on your hands. Patreons, of course, you have received the template for our Tree of Life so that you have a pretty good idea of how to do it. And of course, next week, we'll put it all together. Yay! It was such a labor of love, but wow. Wow, wow, wow. I love it. I think it's fabulous. And then, of course, it is dual-sided. Love it when a plan works. Okay, guys, if you have a chance, if you're interested in how the other half of this book is made, please jump on over to Patreon. The links are down in the comments. Be sure to read the descriptions. Um, of course, you know the front cover is being done over there. Oh, what else do I need to say? Oh, if you need any of the supplies, they are listed down in the Amazon links, also in the comments. And if you could use that link to jump over to Amazon, I would greatly appreciate that also. Same with the Arteza products. Okay, enough blah, blah, blah. Here's the video. We'll chat soon. Bye. Okay, so I did go ahead and decide to space these out at a half inch. Starting at one inch here. Right at one inch and then going from circle to circle. <clears throat> First I had put them at one inch to, or this, you know, starting at one and a half inches here and then one inch spacing. But I know I want to do a lot of wire work with this. So um, I did go ahead and decide to double that up. And, you know, hopefully I'm not making a mistake, but um, what it does do is it will allow the eyelets to become part of the design. And um, I think it'll look really interesting when it's done. Now, I'll give my Patreons this template for these. I'm really glad that I've made these papers be so strong with the fabric. I think it's going to be extremely helpful for this process. The only thing I wish I would have done is I wish I would have made my center wire four wide instead of three wide. I think that would make a difference because then I could wrap two here and two here. I'm trying to see if I can wrap it just right into the seam of the book, which it looks like I could. Ooh, this is scary. If I do that though, what if I that's going to go through on the back. What if I, uh... Where's my owl? Owl, owl. Pokey. My pokey thingy-er.
I you know this is crazy to put it through my book itself. But remember, this isn't the final covering that I have on here. And I definitely want a space for my... main wire to go through. Now the only way that I am able to do this is because I have made this book that sturdy. Otherwise, I definitely would not suggest uh, going through everything like that. Okay, uh, I'm going to go grab some silver eyelets. Hopefully I have enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to have 40 eyelets in here. It should be really beautiful. Um, but, boy, do I have 40 strands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, times three. All right, guys, so I just set all of those eyelets. As you know, I like to use a small handheld eyelet setter whenever possible. I do have the crocodile, uh, but that thing is very, very cumbersome. If you have these little tools right here, you can reach most things. I do have a crocodile in order to reach things that are, you know, in the center of stuff. It's definitely a <clears throat> pain to use those. Um, they're, they're quite cumbersome. All right, I have my silver Sharpie here. I just want to see about giving this just a little bit more highlight here on the edges. Maybe. Just little detail things before I put this tree in here because I'm not going to be able to really get to the back of this again or, you know, to the inside of this. So I want to make sure it is where I want it to be before I move to that next step. No, I don't. I want to take all three of the center one and make it pivot. So I'm going to put it right through the center of the book. So I want this to kind of float in here a little bit. Then this guy is going to go over here. This guy's gonna go over here. Top, top in. Now I'm I still want to put beads on these guys. I'm just trying to get it tacked down for now so that I can have some sort of idea of if it's gonna work right.
it's gonna work right. Okay. And I just don't want to poke my eyes out. I want to make sure that I'm putting these on even, so I'll have to work from side to side. Um, I'm not going to think too much about the color choices of the beads. Of course, you know me. That can always change. Okay, that's one strand done in 13 minutes. <clears throat> this is gonna take a lot of work. I have no doubt about this. This will take a couple days of work, maybe. Well, I know I'm gonna have to start getting ready for work here soon. So um, considering that Saturday and Sunday are my longest days at work, uh, it will take me a considerable amount of time to get this done. Um, you know, all I can hope is that I don't run out of beads. It seems like I have a lot of beads here, but when we're putting on that many beads per strand, um, hopefully we don't run out. Because it's going to really eat up our beads. More than what you think. And I don't think I have anything else even similar to these. Now my other option is I could do blue on the other side and green on this side, which I think would be really pretty. I could easily do that. And then it kind of shows the changing of the seasons too, which you know me, I'm always up for that. Um, or I could mix them all together, the blues and the greens, which would be really pretty, but I'm not doing that yet. So if I'm going to decide to do that, I need to decide that quickly. Um, I think I like the thought of the blue on one side, the green on the other. What are you doing, Oz? What are you doing? You want to go out and see if your buddies are out playing? Is that what you're telling me? Hmm? You gonna come see me? You gonna come see me? Come here. Come see me. Come here. Oh yes, my boy. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. You got goobers in your eyes. He's just waiting for his buddies to wake up. He's been waking me up early every single morning so that he could go outside and play with his friends. 
they're leaving today though, so he's going to be very sad. He's a very social boy. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, not for us. Not for us. Getting down. Oh, big stretch. Oh, big stretch. Big stretch. Big stretch. Okay. <clears throat> he just really wants me to go out and check. See if he can go outside yet. It is. It's exactly what, that's what you want to do, isn't it? That's all you want to do. Go play. You want to go play with my friends now, Mom? You gotta love the boy. Oh, this is gonna take some work. But I think it'll be really cool when it's done. Okay, artists. Well, I've gotten one side done. And I think that it works pretty successfully. You know, the, trying to keep the bulk again out of the middle didn't do quite as well as I'd hoped. We're gonna have definitely some pushing on that page. But, you know, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna sit like the rest of our books do. Um, we're gonna have, I think, I think it's gonna work out okay. Now, I haven't, connected any of these things and the reason for that is if I want to adjust these once it's all done to have it sit up a little bit higher I want to be able to move these um, as necessary but I think what I want to make sure of is um, I want to get all of the initial branches in and then I'll deal with the rest of it later. This has been quite the process uh, learning how to do this, this technique. So um, I thought I would bring you back here for this second part. That's going to need definitely some reworking, but we'll work through that um, when we get to our refining portion of this page, which will include, you know, the wire bending um, and, and any readjustments like that. So I added wire into each of these sides up here. This one I want to fix here real fast. So we just take our jewelry plier, put a little twist on it there so that it won't hurt anybody. And then we push it down into it. So I just kind of did a little curly cue and got it to get into that rest of that wire and look like some sort of a pattern. And let's kind of make this guy a little bit more distinct here for our center. Just so that we can make sure that everything is gonna open properly. So I need to pull through here a little bit more. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So I have nine strands here. And I have nine eyelets. But I want two strands to go into each hole. So I'm going to take additional pieces of wire and add them to it. So the first one I'm going to put here through this first hole. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to pinch it and twist it. 
I'm going to take one of these strands and I'm going to twist it into there. And that's ready for number two. I'm going to take this other new strand that I just added in with this guy, the, whichever the second one is. I'm going to twist it. Twist that wire together. And that one is going to be ready for number three. Okay, so now I've got one left here. We're going to take another piece of wire, fold it in half ish. And I'm going to put it behind that. First loop or first set of wires. And we're going to give this guy a twist also. Pull it down tight together and twist. Then what we're going to do is bring this guy up here and do another twist. We will twist more once we put the beads on it. And this also does kind of create a root like shape in there. So we're taking that second one that we made, we're going to the next guy, and we're doing a twist there. Now, I think it would be better to keep all the twists going in the same direction. There. Let's give it that a little bit tighter. Twist and pull. Now, the reason why I'm sticking them into the eyelets without the beads on them is I'm just trying to get the general shape and form right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to untwist this just a little bit so that I can get one up in here. And if you kind of set them like in groupings of three and then twist, and then again, groups of three, twist, I'm trying to keep that twist uh, in between the beads instead of, so you see how I put on 20 on there? We won't even need that many. There, I've put a couple more in there, five or so. I want to make sure that I've got enough space to really move this. So we're going to leave a few of those on there, but we're going to pull a couple of those off. Okay, <clears throat> those are done. So this is wrapped here. We're gonna pull that out. And this is wrapped here, so we're gonna pull that out. We're gonna unwrap these. Do I have my tools here? Tools that I'm using. Again, the blunt nose, flat um, pliers, which I haven't used that as much a strong heavy duty pliers that can really grab onto things. We have our jewelers. This is a circle uh, pliers where you can make little individual circles. Oops, you're crooked. 
Why does that always happen? Okay. Um, and then it just kind of whatever, you know, whatever works at the time. You know, if you have like an owl, A-W-L, owl, owl, this thingy, you could probably do your little circles pretty easy with that. Maybe we'll try that to see if it goes any faster. All right, so as I'm unwrapping these, I'm just giving these wires a little bend up top so that all the beads don't go sliding off as I'm working with them. Because they do that. They just go falling off the wire. Not so much on this side because I've already, you know, put quite a few bends into the wire, but they do come apart. Mm -hmm. They do. All right. So put our little bends in here. And here. Okay. So we're going to pull those beads out of there if we can. Because we need to make space for the wire wrapping. We're going to close that up. That'll be a mess if I dump that over. And we don't have to pull all of them out of there, out of the way. And we're just kind of braiding this in in a random pattern. So you see how quickly all I did was kind of fold and um, move those along where I want them to be. Now this is the part that's hard on your hands. So I'm actually going to take, yeah, I'll take those two. And then we're going to put those guys in there. About three to a twist ends up working pretty well. You see? And then we will spread these apart and have them go into each hole individually. Even though they're going into the same hole, they do go in individually. So we're going to pull some of those guys off. This does take adjusting. Constant, continual adjustment. So here's where you can take your owl and just wrap that wire around it. And that actually makes a really nice, easy wrap when you're done with it. Now, I put that wrap in there so that uh, the beads don't come off. And then we're going to take some of these beads off. and unhook or just trim your wire off of here so you can get the beads actually off of there and uh, Just trying to give it a little extra shape in there. I don't know if this is easier to use or harder. 